Good afternoon, everybody. You, thank you for joining us at Vology's Wireside Chats. I'm your host, Neil Terraciano. Today's topic is going to be on converged infrastructure. It's going to be far, part of a four-part series. First one's going to be a high overview, 50,000-foot uh, uh, view of convergence. We're going to define it and talk about some of the ways that uh, an IT department might apply that into their infrastructure. Uh, and then the other three are going to be with uh, some of what Vology finds to be key players uh, in the uh, convergence universe, uh, so to speak. So uh, if I may, let me take a moment to introduce you to a few of our uh, subject matter experts. Uh, one of them uh, you may have met before, the world famous and quite possibly the world's most beautiful engineer, Kevin Reynolds. Kevin, how are you today? I'm fantastic, Neil. Uh, Eddie didn't uh, put all the big bright lights shining directly in my face today, so I'm very, very happy about that. We're just as happy. So, <laughs> so also who joins me is uh, the world's busiest director at Vology. I may have offended a few directors at Vology with that one, but I know that Dan Patrick is a very busy man. Dan, thank you for joining us. Uh, could you tell us a little bit uh, about what you do here at Vology? Thanks, Neil. I'm really excited to be here. My name is Dan Patrick. I'm the Director of Technical Services here at Vology, and uh, I pretty much run our, our, our field engineering teams that focus on networking, virtualization, and storage every single day. So I'm excited to be a part of this amazing uh, new technology uh, conversation that we're having today. That's great. Dan, Dan joins us. Uh, Dan, you've been with us uh, for how long now? I uh, joined Vology uh, about the beginning of March, so it's uh, it's about five months, but in Vology time, that's uh, dog years, so let's see, uh, it's at least two years now, so, you know, <laughs> we, we kind of work uh, what we call intergalactic days around here, they last 37 hours, and, uh, you know, that's because we're doing whatever it takes for our customers every single day. Yes, uh, certainly, I know I've spent countless hours uh, in your office uh, with Kevin as well, um, doing a lot of uh, really neat stuff for our customers, so we're excited uh, uh, to get this thing moving as we uh, get to our uh, new era of Vology, right? Absolutely. So what I wanted to do was, was just sort of start off with uh, a simple understanding or definition of convergence, right? Because we can talk about convergence in a lot of ways. What we've got to be careful about is um, whether we're using a marketing term or a buzzword or what we actually mean, right? Um, so what I wanted to do was at least go over the definition of convergence. Um, that part at least remains the same, um, which is uh, essentially bringing many parts to one, right? So um, that's all really convergence is. Now we've got a lot of things that we're going to talk about here in the next uh, 50 minutes or so that, that will give us into a little bit more of the detail and, and of course by default we're, we're going to end up going down a few paths that will lead to uh, the marketing term but in the end it's all leading to the, to the same place right hence uh, the word uh, to converge uh, and uh, if I may uh, uh, move on we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, some of the things that convergence um, uh, tends to resolve as well right uh, as we move through this we're going to talk about how uh, convergence provides value, what the stated value of convergence is, um, as well as some of um, some of the things that, that some of the uh, manufacturers out there, especially the disruptive ones, um, are sort of changing the way that uh, that we do IT. So um, essentially some of the major things that we talk about with convergence or the problems we solve are they reduce sprawl, uh, which we're going to have Kevin comment on uh, here in a moment. Um, and then there's also um, the reduced cost of management because things become a little simpler. Um, and then there's also the other, uh, the other piece where we can gain some function, um, both in the, the amount of space that the gear takes, uh, where we can end up doing more with, with less, essentially. Uh, again, a, a byproduct of, of convergence. And I mean, more importantly, I think from a business perspective, for, for the business owners out there, um, the increased agility that it gives an IT department, an ability for you to uh, essentially consume uh, any um, other uh, form of business and turn them on or turn them up almost immediately um, or change the direction of your business or even change your strategy without ripping and replacing an entire data center. So let's go back to the first piece, which is sprawl. Uh, Kevin, I think you're probably a good person. I think every day you battle sprawl, right? Uh, um, Dan, I, I'm sure you battle a little sprawl yourself. I think we've recently had an engagement uh, where we had customers with uh, somewhere around 30 or 40 different vendors that were sitting in their rack. Um, that's an old problem now, right, uh, right, Kevin? So, what would you, how would you describe um, the problem of sprawl, and how does convergence uh, uh, solve that for a customer? Yeah. So, I mean, as 
as far as sprawl is concerned, you know, in a in a traditional physical server model, uh, so <clears throat> you had server after server, each physical piece of hardware had its kind of own purpose and or role, uh, and then of course you have to accommodate for the uh, you know the, for the battery backup and the additional switching capacity, so forth and so on. Um, <clears throat> so intro virtualization, and that has actually reduced that footprint somewhat. Um, However, you still have all of your disparate systems, right? So you've got your compute and RAM nodes, and then you've got your storage, and then you've got your uh, sand fabric, and then it's and then your you know everything has to be presented out to the LAN, right? So so you still have all of these different systems that still need to be brought together, and again, that's still taking up our use space, and that's drawing power, and and you know requiring cooling, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> in theory. Or, or at its rudimentary level, convergence is really just combining all of your compute node, uh, your storage, software-defined uh, networking, kind of put it all together onto one box and uh, present everything virtually up to the hypervisor so that you can carve it out as necessary. Um, so, so, so that's really the definition of convergence, is taking all of those different... Uh, uh, aspects or facets of the data center that, that we needed to accommodate for and combining them into a single kind of box product uh, that is extremely scalable and uh, makes it a lot easier uh, to, to provision additional hardware to add on to the mesh and to grow your infrastructure. So do you think that, um, you know, it's hard to measure, right? I mean, how much sprawl will cost uh, in a, a business uh, to run? I mean, do you have some examples or so of, of some customers where um, sprawl sort of, got, sort of gotten away from them and you can sort of see what's happening as far as how expensive it's getting and, and it even changes the way you buy gear, right? I mean, it becomes reactionary. Uh, absolutely. And so, so as a new initiatives come in, you know, all of a sudden we – as we're planning and provisioning for um, additional RU space that we're going to need, you know, data center capacity, et cetera, um, they, we don't always necessarily know what in new initiatives are going to be brought down the pipe, right? And so if we're not careful, especially in, in a non-converged type infrastructure, um, it can make planning for that potential growth very difficult, right? Whereas with a converged infrastructure model, they're all very boltable Lego block type units. So, so as you need to grow, you have this anticipated growth. You know approximately what it's going to be, and so you can just provision the hardware uh, in a single box or an N plus one type model to, uh, to be ready for you when it comes time to actually start provisioning those new server environments. So it sounds like we're going to the next point, right, which was about agility. That's something I think that has been difficult. Again, it's difficult to measure. Um, so, so Dan, you know, I think we're going to point this one at you. I think you deal with more C-suite uh, than the rest of us. Uh, and you probably have some good insight on the value that agility can bring uh, to any IT director or CIO that's looking to, uh, to improve things, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, agile IT and and having IT bring value to the business uh, is really kind of the the core um, you know goal of almost any uh, you know modern day uh, IT director or CIO uh, or, or even CTO, right? They're really looking for ways to enable the business, um, you know, with both within uh, within the data center and. Uh, out in the cloud, obviously, right? And so, you know, one of the you know the, the newer ways to 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 think about um, or or you know sort of build on new capabilities is something like converged. Um, in the past, if there was a, a new workload that would come along that a, a CTO or a CIO uh, would want to put in place, you know, it would be a very long project cycle to to get from you know concept. Through an entire design, um, you know, and, and kind of just talking about what what Kevin was hitting on in terms of rack space and power and, and um, you know network switching capabilities, storage, all these things that 
know, really have to come together in order to, to produce an IT service, which is really what the business is interested in, right? They're interested in the service that will enable their business to grow. Um, you know, all of those things are very difficult. And with, with Converged, you really can bolt on workloads that you don't feel like need to go to the cloud today very quickly, right? The, you know, the cloud seems like the answer, the end-all, be-all answer to everything these days. But it, it's not true. There's there's data that you want to keep in house. You have privacy, regulatory, all different types of, of things that keep you from you know en enabling new uh, you know new workloads, enabling you to, to be agile. But converge really brings that into play, especially in uh, scenarios like business intelligence. Um, and, and even virtual desktops, right? Where you know, if you don't have a virtual desktop infrastructure, if you were going to start from scratch to build that, you would have to go and create that entire infrastructure. With something like Converged, you basically could, you know, very quickly, you know, choose the choose the the you know the number of desktops that you want to put in place. You know, work with a, a company like Vology to to find the right solution for you, and we can have it in your in your data center. Uh, extremely quickly, you know. We of course could help with the other piece, but it wouldn't be nearly as fast, and, and ultimately wouldn't hit those core goals of being agile. So, and and the one other thing is, is it really does allow for the collapse uh, of vendors, right? So the the less number of vendors that that anyone has to deal with IT, the faster they're going to be able to uh, to to turn a service on or 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 uh, you know enable some new uh, business process through a system. So. Uh, you know, I really think that converged is, uh, is is almost the answer for agile IT, especially when the answer is it has to be as fast as cloud, but it can't be in the cloud. And I think that's a uh, you know it's really a good insight. Um, you know, the ability to make adjustments has always been a problem for IT, right, Dan? I mean, uh -huh. uh, any given moment, your COO can come in and and uh, make a, a drastic change that uh, from the non-technical side of things and if there's any IT folks listening you know we've all heard of this right we've all been through this um, well you know we just need to go ahead and stand up a shopping cart or we need to just spin up a website or I just bought a huge company I need them on board in four days um, not that easy to do right yeah, and that's actually, you know, when I was talking about, you know, something like, you know, boot, you know, bootstrapping, um, you know, a, a very important workload that that needs great compute, it needs speed, it needs lots of space. But you know, you're dealing with your constraints, no matter what the business or the executives or the marketing, or the, the the marketplace throws in front of you, right? You know, and and you think about being able to. You know, really, I mean, it's 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 easy to install a server, right? It's easy to install some of this stuff. What isn't easy is backing it up, managing it, DRing it, doing all of these things. And you know, some of these technologies that we're going to talk about today really allow for you know not only rapid acquisition and installation, but also everything else that goes along with making sure that the thing is available, that you can do continuity of business on it, um, and, and do load balancing across any data center worldwide. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's a compelling it's a compelling technology. It's probably one of the most uh, disruptive technologies, really, that we've seen since virtualization virtualization in the in the client server space that has come to light. Um, and it's a it's an exciting to topic to be talking about. And it's a great opportunity for uh, for IT directors, for uh, CTOs to, uh, to to have rapid answers to difficult questions that um, that are uh, placed in front of them every day. You know, you said something. You called it a technology, right? And it really is is a sort of technology. And maybe if we, you know, it gives us an opportunity to sort of segue into uh, something else, which is differentiating um, the practice of convergence, right, and a convergence uh, product, right? Both, you know, very valuable in their own right. But I think that it's important, uh, Dan, and maybe you can kind of help us understand, you know, the practice of convergence um, versus a converged product, right? I mean, sure. um, one is sort of a turnkey solution, essentially, right, that's set up and ready to go, and the other one is a design practice, right? Could you give us a little color on that? Yeah, I think it's really important to, to realize that, um, you know, convergence is both. It is, it is both a strategy um, in terms of your design, but it's also uh, it, it's it's becoming new products that are in the marketplace. Um, 
And so it, it, the the idea um, of of anything converged is really um, the the direction that everyone should be heading. And so you know if you if you look at um, you know not only the the products and the vendors that are kind of traditional out there, and we'll talk about those in just a second. They're pretty interesting, but I think that more than anything, what you need is you need a, a partner like Vology, if I can give ourselves a plug here for a second. Mm-hmm. That that really you know is is uh, uh, is kind of at the forefront of the converged space. Um, you know we've really jumped into the deep end of the pool with converged space. We think that it's uh, a, a very important um, shift in the marketplace, and, it, and because of that, you know, we're gearing up. We're doing converged on our own network. Um, we're rolling it out um, to all all different kinds of networks in in places where it makes sense um, to do that. And so, you know, having a great a great firm like Biology to help you is, uh, you know, is of course one of the most important things that can be, help you be successful. But you know, in the, using the traditional design principles. Um, you know, around virtualization, you know, from those pretty quickly you can jump into, uh, you know, building converged designs, you know, using virtual storage arrays and, and, and getting creative with, with how you, you put together your virtualization clusters and, and, and try to replace some of the traditional vendors and some of the software spend that you might have had to, to you know, make the solution work, get it to that last, uh, get it through that last mile um, to really give you the, the promise that virtualization had. Um, you know, is possible and important with uh, traditional vendors like you know HP or Dell. Um, but then there's also more of the turnkey solution providers, such as Simplicity. Uh, Simplicity is a fantastic group that we've been working very closely with. Uh, we've got two of our most senior engineers uh, actually uh, out there working with some of their team this week um, to help us to to. Uh, you know, to, to try to bring forward the, the right solutions on top of the Simplicity platform, where you're bringing storage, compute, everything in one box. Um, you know, that's a turnkey solution. And then we also have uh, you know other uh, other vendors like Nutanix, um, which you know have sort of uh, you know each one of these kind of have different design. Uh, you know things that they're better at, if you will. But you know, Nutanix is also an interesting player in the converged space. Um, you know, actually using the Google file system. So, um, you know, there, there's it's it's not only a design concept of, of building something converged uh, with your traditional enterprise providers like HP and Dell, but then we have the new players out in the marketplace that Biology can help you with through Simplicity or Nutanix. That's great. So, you know, and, and Dan, I appreciate you kind of going over that. We were going to ask you, you know, who you thought the big players were, and, and you know, coincidentally, those are the people that we're going to have on the show um, over the next uh, uh, few uh, sessions that um, are going to be on this topic of converged infrastructure, um, and sort of all falls under the umbrella of uh, virtualization, to your point, Kevin. So, um, you know, I think that what I'd like to do at this point is, you know, maybe go to our next question. Um, that I believe is probably one of the more important ones, right? The one, uh, and Dan, I'm gonna I'm gonna point this one at you again since we have you. Um, the, as far as costs go, right? Operation costs or opex is is sort of a term we use loosely uh, in the business. Um, TCO, another one, right? Total cost of ownership. These things are affected by uh, by convergence, right? The practice of convergence, whether it's a converged product or a converged uh, a solution, is presented by a, a reseller. Um, are there some ways that you can maybe delineate that um, a customer or an end user might experience some of the the the, the lower costs or the savings that are associated with? It? Yeah. So when we think of you know operational costs, and this is clearly um, you know, something that's really important, especially, um, you know, not only for IT directors, but, you know, really when we're talking about, you know, justifying, uh, um, you know, new products or new new projects, if you will, and we think about, you know, the total number of man hours and software and vendors, and you, you wrap it all together, I think this is one of the places where the, the converged infrastructure players really have an interesting story. Um, the... First of all, you really are lowering the number of vendors that you're potentially using, right? Um, you know, inside of, uh, of say, a, a Simplicity um, solution, um, you know, you're going to have obviously the, the the compute and the uh, you know the 
the virtualization piece that that's you know brought into play with VMware um, as a part of that. But then there's also disaster recovery built into it, um, and it comes with the machine. You have WAN acceleration and data du uh, duplication um, that that are just a, a native part of, of the actual box, as well as auto tiering uh, of data around um, inside of the machine. All those things that I just threw out there that sound like technologies are actually huge cost savings for you, right? Um, if you were to say license, um, you know, a, a virtual storage array uh, for a box like that, it would cost you software dollars, and you may have an extra vendor that you would have to go to, you know, muddling the waters for, you know, support costs, um, you know, acquisition costs in terms of how much time it takes you to um, to get through a process to actually, um, you know, purchase that, uh, and so you know, I think that, uh, and also backup software as well. Uh, what ends up happening is, is, you know, you sort of have to take into account all of those costs and you're boiling it down to, to only having, you know, say, uh, you know, you, you went from five or six vendors to only one vendor. That's a huge cost savings. It's a huge time savings, right? Um, the next thing for me, really, in terms of operational costs is, is you know, rapid escalation of support issues. I was uh, worked at Microsoft for 15 years in support, and, you know, it, one of the... the, the things that really hurt customers the most that I saw was there was always, uh, you know, conflicts in terms of which vendor do I really talk to? Is it an HP problem or is it a Microsoft problem or is it a this problem or that problem? Hmm. If you have a storage, uh, uh, you know, you have a converged solution, um, what ends up happening is, is you're talking to one vendor. You know, you don't you don't have an issue of, you know, do I need to call the, the, the server group or do I call you know, whoever I bought my SAN from or do I call who I bought my, my virtualization software? You know, it's all sort of together in one support package. And that that's a huge savings just in terms of, you know, how many times have all of us had to re-explain an issue when you called into the queue <laughs> to some support vendor? So, you know, just that in of itself, you know, restoring service, working with vendors, uh, the, the less number of vendors. And I do want to go back to one other piece that I just talked about, just the inherent benefits of, you know, in, in the past, you may have thought on your network, wow, we really need WAN acceleration, or we need, you know, better DR software. Just the simple fact that, you know, when you make that core con converged solution purchase uh, and, and it's productized, then, you know, you get that as a part of what you bought. Um, that could be a significant change, especially for our customers that are more in the mid-market or, or smaller markets that are worried about cost, but they really need you know those benefits. If they can't restore something or you know or, or get their their service back online, you know they may go out of business. And so, even though uh, it may sometimes, when you look at a conversion solution on the face of it, it seems like it's a bit more expensive. The truth is, is there's so much inherent value there that ultimately the costs are are, are really um, the, the costs are really uh, you know much lower. And that really rings true, right? It's just I think what is probably one of the most important things that um, we could do as a trusted advisor to any end user is to help articulate, you know, the value um, that we can bring. And when we when there's a total cost of ownership um, reduction that that really reaches out into the other silos, um, like you had mentioned things about uh, software, and Kevin, you had mentioned some reduced power costs, and then. Uh, uh, Dan, you mentioned some manageability, you know, in the, in, we'll call them the old days, even though it's kind of like today, it, we had an EMC uh, uh, professional that would work on the EMC silo, uh, but that probably wasn't the only SAN we had. We may have had a NetApp uh, box that was doing our, uh, our file services, right, and that might be a, a different professional working that, and then we have someone else that's working the servers, and then, of course, someone that's working the networking side, and then the security person, and these are all uh, silos that are sort of um, disparate, and it becomes very difficult to manage it, and I think one of the biggest pain points, and if there's a single IT person on this uh, watching right now, you've heard it, Dan, you, you hit home. We've all dealt with it. Uh, we'll call one vendor and find out that we need cooperation with another vendor, and then those vendors need to open tickets with each other just so that the three of us can get on the phone and you know it's just the nature of the beast, and I and we can all understand you know why it's so necessary. You have no idea what effect something may have on your product. So I think it's a very good 
a very important point to make, and it's very hard to measure. So um, it's very important that we get better at articulating that um, to our to the directors and to the CIOs of the world that uh, make those decisions on whether or not they want to invest in our network. Um, one big investment that's coming um, that um, again another buzzword big data right I find in my opinion very very closely related uh, to convert uh, to I'm sorry to uh, uh, business intelligence most big data you know is uh, sort of the um, sort of the the destination or target for business intelligence and our ability to to uh, sort of um, pull valuable information out of incredible amounts of of data uh, has become more and more of an issue and, and it's interesting how it's turned from it's not necessarily a problem but there's gold in there and we've got to get better at, at finding that um, but again it's a new thing big data is huge how do I design something uh, for big data um, how do I um, change where I'm going? Do I get with my a my EMC person, my NetApp person, my server person? You know, do you see Dan a, a value for convergence as it relates to some of these newer issues in IT too? Right? Uh, you know, outside of agile IT, there's of course this this big data piece. Do you see some value there? Do you see that it could be a, a sort of a solution for some of us in the mid market to smaller enterprise market? Yeah, definitely. I, I think that. Um you know, I, before I came to Biology, I was actually uh, uh, in charge of uh, running a, a big data infrastructure for uh, for a consulting firm. And one of the uh, one of the one of the interesting things about it was is um, you know a lot of people think big data and they immediately think cloud. You know, they think, oh, well, I need to be Amazon or it needs to be run in Windows, you know, SQL Azure or something like that. And really the point uh, about any sort of data project, whether it's data mining or BI or big data, it's really more about what are the, what's the outcome, right? How, does, how, do, how do I change the business? And, and then also how approachable is it for me, um, as you said, it, you know, say, the, say the mid market. And a lot of times, um, you know, customers or, or, you know, companies will, will go down the path of, of looking into a big data solution or, um, you know, trying to, to get uh, more interesting around business intelligence. And what they find is, is that their infrastructure doesn't support it, but cloud isn't performant enough, right? Um, I, I definitely saw that in the projects that I was working on where, you know, you want answers fast and now, especially when, when you've got some, some decent data scientists, and the cloud isn't necessarily performant. Big data doesn't mean fast data. Right, 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 and and that's that's a big difference that that most people uh, kind of miss. The other thing is is, you know, I actually like to focus on what um, what we called smart data, right? And smart data was really about you know how do I make the correlations across lots of different disparate systems or different or disparate you know um, methodologies in order to come up with something that that um, is a force multiplier for my business, right? And so when I look at a solution like a converged solution. It, it, it works perfectly for a big data, smart data, in-house type of, uh, of solution. It, it has, you know, decent sized data volumes, you know, in the, the, the you know, easily 20T is very approachable for, for um, not much money, as well as it has an auto-tiering auto -tiering VSA typically involved um, where it will move data around, right, up into flash for, for large index, indexing um, and, you know, for things like, uh, you know, NoSQL, Cassandra, and other types of, of uh, technologies where you're doing, um, you know, all different side, types of data approaches. So the way I look at it is, 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 you know, big data should be smart data for you, and converged is a way to not only, you know, put your, you put your toe in the water for it, but it's a way to jump into the deep end of the pool without, you know, ha needing to do it all in the cloud, right? Um, and so, you know, it definitely is interesting. Um, so, you know, and that's a good point, you know, and, and uh, smart, I think we may have to coin the smart data um, uh, piece because essentially it's, it's sort of navigating a sea of otherwise useless and out of context information in order to find something that's useful. And I think from a design perspective, um, what we find to be the bigger issue is a lot of us um, are, are approaching this, but we don't know how to design for it. We don't know how much compute we might need in order to do the indexing that we need in order to find the information that we don't want or that we do want. 
Um, and convergence does offer that opportunity, right? It, uh, it's since it is converged, the the ability for us to make adjustments, right? Um, uh, if we find that we need a little more compute, we spin up maybe a couple more virtual machines. It'll assist in that, right? Or or maybe if we need uh, um, uh, some to make some changes to those virtual machines, we can just provision additional memory for those machines. And so even the smallest of those that have a big data need, um, convergence brings that piece as well, right? Where it gives them the opportunity. And you know, one of the things that that um, we hear a lot when with from customers where we where we sort of get on our soapbox about the value of convergence is a fear of putting all your eggs in one basket, right? I mean, this is a natural, the next thought, right? I mean, we want to be careful. We want to worry about things like, what if someone pulls the plug? Um, what happens? And we're talking about bringing everything into, you know, just two data centers instead of 15, you know, distributed data centers. That the old style of, of best practices is being challenged here, right, Kevin? So what I want to ask you is, we spin up all of these virtual machines. I've got my security, and, and I've got my file services, and my Active Directory, and a lot of other virtual machines. They're all spun up in this converged solution. Um, so is there a real issue here? Is there the inherent risks? And I want you to touch on two things. Touch on the eggs in a basket concern, which I think is a reasonable first reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And then are we revealing uh, any opportunities for some security concerns, and I mean all the way from the perimeter to inside um, and email. Sure. Um, so, you know, that, that, qu that question kind of ties in directly to uh, Dan's point about converged infrastructure really being more than just taking all the different hardware technologies and stuffing them into a single box, right? There, oftentimes, there's, uh, there's a lot more going on at the software layer as well. So, so we're, we're using technologies like software auto-tiering and virtualizing, virtual virtualizing storage, uh, including SSDs and spinning disk, in order to create different zones. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, so to that point, uh, again, the, the converged infrastructures are doing a lot more at the software layer as well. One of those things uh, that they're doing is actually meshing and, and kind of, we'll use the term rating uh, themselves for, for redundancy and resiliency, right? So naturally yes it, it would be a concern to say okay well you know so I've taken my my switching and my fiber channel and my compute and my storage and I put it all onto the same box and so well what happens right well just like anything else we're architecting these solutions so that they have redundancy built in you essentially build in an n plus one model for your converged infrastructure solution so that if you were to lose you know up to a single node up to an entire node um, the the rest of the solution, the rest of the the actual hardware, the converged boxes, are are talking to each other, and there's a there's a certain mesh there, right? So they're aware of the issues with that node, and they can pick up the workload. Uh, you know, uh, again, very similar to the way uh, you know a RAID array allows you to fail a drive, and uh, it it can still be aware of the the fact that that drive has failed, and and pick up on the redundancy factor, and and keep your data safe, right? So it's it you you architect the solution with the redundancy built in that you need uh, and uh, again oftentimes it's as simple as an n plus one model and and therefore you it, the all the eggs in one basket is not really a concern because uh, maybe we have all of our eggs in baskets uh, maybe the baskets look exactly the same and 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 they kind of do the same right. effect but we've built those baskets to be large enough to contain the entirety of the eggs, even if we should lose one of them. Right. So essentially, you know, what, what you're saying is that that convergence actually provides the opposite. It provides us maybe with something even more resilient than your typical. Even if we go pre-virtualization, you know, if we have a bunch of physical boxes, uh, I think in comparison to that, would you argue that uh, a, uh, an appropriately designed um, converged infrastructure may reveal some higher availability than your typical disparate siloed approach? Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily that inherently the technologies provide for more high availability or more redundancy, but it certainly can provide the same level of redundancy, if not more so, in a much simpler and less complex fashion. 
right? So, so it, it again, not not to say that it's more redundant than the ways that we would have done it in the past, mm -hmm. but it's certainly less convoluted than the ways we would have had to do it in the past in order to maintain the same levels of redundancy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and on security, do you do you think it changes at all when it comes to you know uh, you know from perimeter to to anything on the inside that we're doing or even some of the now the application layer firewall stuff that we're doing do you see maybe a weakness that's being revealed or or do you feel that maybe we're adding some some capabilities in that regard you know so so in my experience and and inevitably there's always going to be someone to argue with that right but in my experience the the technologies that are providing the security um, they're not necessarily impacted by the fact that we are converging the infrastructure or what we are doing at the software layer as far as the virtual machines are concerned. So all your same security parameters are still in place, all of your perimeter security and your NTFS permissions right down to um, you know uh, what you can do at the network layer as far as VLANing and as far as routing is concerned. You know, all of those functionalities are still there. So, you know, again, in, in my opinion, in my, my experience, I don't really see that the convergence necessarily presents any additional security risks. It doesn't necessarily inherently shore up security any tighter either. Um, you still have to be diligent of, of, of all of your uh, security aspects, but again, it's, it's not really presenting any additional security holes to the, to the infrastructure or to the environment. So, Dan, I've got one for you. Sure. Um, in your um, infinite wisdom, um, I think you have, uh, what, maybe 50 years in IT, right? Um, That's uh, great. Man, I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't your first rodeo. I think you've been through a few implementations. Uh, I know that uh, in your former life, um, it's quite possible we could count them in maybe even four or five <laughs> digits considering the... Uh, you know, at some level, some way or shape or form, you've been involved. So you might be the best guy for us to go to on this one. What? So what do you think? What, what do you think the big concern is? Uh, what What do you think the the after a CI implementation occurs? Give us sort of the 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 beginning and after that an IT you know a director or or even a CIO that's considering it. And I, and I'm wrapping a few questions up in one on this one. You know. What what comes to mind when the implementation process? So, what words of wisdom do you have for those of us that are considering implementing it, so that we don't get stuck in a oh I didn't think about that moment? Um, and then you know where do we usually find these customers afterwards? Because you know whether we like it or not, feel. right? How do they feel? <laughs> so, what's the converged? You know, what does that make them a customer feel like afterwards? Essentially, in your uh, and and we know what the answer is. It's rhetorical. So, if you could maybe start off on the beginning on that one and tell us. You know, well, what are your words on wisdom on that? I think that um, the one thing I would say that uh, is really important, and this is this is something that's always really important, but it, it may be more important here uh, than in other way, in other types of deployments is is making sure that, especially if you go with a converged solution product, right, like a Nutanix or a, a, the SimpliVity product, you want to make sure that you've properly trained the people that are doing the engineering and the people that are going to run the operations, right? And I know that that goes without saying, you know, we always harp on training, but at the same time, it's one of the first things that's like thrown out the window as we don't, you know, we'll just figure it out. And it's pretty easy, you know, if you get on a, on a SimpliVity box, for example, when you sit down, you're like, wow, this, looks, this is VMware, right? But the truth is, is that it, it is VMware, but it's got a lot of little twists, right? And and you can um, you can back yourself into a corner that's really hard to get out of later, without you know the proper training and due diligence and planning up front, right? Once again, that's an area where you know a company like Vology can really help you, right? You know we'll work directly with our simplicity partners, for example, um, and we can do we can do that design with you, so that you know we're doing a lot of those designs like now. If you're going to do a SimpliVity install, for example, that's going to be the first one you've ever done, right? So, you know, don't get caught up in the fact that, wow, it looks like it looks like and smells like, you know, VMware, so I can just do it. Um, so that's probably the first thing. Um, the second thing is, is that, you know, the converged infrastructure, 
can really be misconceived as a panacea, right? It can be misconceived as, you know, something where I can just get rid of everything else I have, right? Or I, I just want to run my whole network on it. And the truth is, is that that's not really what it's for, right? It's for specific places. It's for places where, you know, you... you you want to get rid of a, a lot of old disparate parts and, and get down to less disparate parts, right? Um, and I think that, that that's another misconception that we've seen. Um, and, and then, you know, finally I would say is that, uh, you know, the customers that we've seen that have done it really, really like the box. Um, the one thing that, the, that they do uh, walk away from you know, probably feeling that they, they didn't quite understand as much going in is in order to run and, and gain all the efficiencies of convergence on a, on a machine, um, you know, say like a, a CN2000 or CN3000 um, SimpliVity machine, is that, you know, a portion of, of, let's say, for example, the RAM and compute inside of that box is used by the SimpliVity virtual machine that's doing all that great stuff for you, right? So if you buy a 256 gig box, let's say, um, you know, there's a certain portion of that RAM that's going to go to do all that auto tiering your data, right? To do right. all those overhead, <laughs> overhead right? And 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 that's that's one thing that people get a little bit wrapped around. So that's why we invite people here to Vology. We bring them to our solution center lab, or we even do POCs on site, right? So we can make sure that the sizing is correct and that we've really thought through. Um, you know the the way the installation and the deployment's going to go, so that hopefully you know, but with by beginning with the end in mind, we don't run into these types of issues. So you know, I think that this is a good opportunity for us to sort of wrap this up. Um, you know, Dan, I can't thank you enough for setting the time aside. I know that you've probably received somewhere around 120 emails uh, just in the uh, amount of time you've been on this with us. So um, I, I greatly appreciate. Uh, you setting the time aside to, to get on and, and have this discussion with us. Um, and Kevin, you know, the same to you. I, I really appreciate it. As always, we thank you for, for gracing us with your beautifulness. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, what I want to do is tell you guys I about... I um, for my mind. Uh, we'll, we'll work on that. We're not there yet. <laughs> so, you know, actually, um, and, and I don't mean to cut you off, but but before we get into the closing statements, I, I definitely wanted to touch on on what Dan was just saying. Um, you know, it, as far as planning for your CI infrastructure, definitely make sure that you do your diligences and that you do your homework, that you're checking into everything, uh, and that you fully understand what your um, C-level suite or whomever is pushing these initiatives down upon you, fully understand what they expect the environment to be doing, what they expect the environment to be supporting, and make sure that you go through and that you do your diligences and that you size everything right and that you look into all the caveats. Um, <clears throat> and of course there's, you know, I mean there's guys like me that do this day in and day out, so so you know, if you do run into a challenge, re reach out to a friend. Um, it's you know, it gives us purpose. That's why we're here. Uh, but, you know, again, it, uh, a stitch in time saves nine, and it's always better to better to measure twice and cut once. Oh, that's a good one. So, <laughs> so let me um, wrap this up, Kevin. Thanks for the insight, and and I think we all know that that's probably some of the wisest, right? I mean, you could sum up Dan's comments with that too. You know, to some degree, um, you know. If, if you have any doubt at all, make sure that you do have the right trusted advisor in place, um, whether it's a friend that's working in their environment or whether it's a VAR um, that you have a close enough relationship with. And if you don't, then you should be reaching out to Vology because that's what our relationships are like. Um, so we've got three more of these coming, guys. Um, I'm very excited to, to go over each one of them, um, to, to, to host each one of them. Uh, one of them will be the SimpliVity uh, technologies, uh, which are, of course, very exciting. Um, SimpliVity offers some very unique values associated with their solution um, that um, obviously are, are warrant a discussion. Uh, same thing with Nutanix. Uh, they have some of their own caveats that bring a great deal of value. And, and as Dan said, they use uh, GFS, which is uh, you know something I think a lot of IT uh, departments are very interested in evaluating. Uh, and that's just one little piece, not to not to take away from the value that, that comes with each one of these. Uh, and then thirdly, 
um, we're going to visit. Uh, we're going to get a visit from some of the folks at uh, HP. For those of you that um, maybe want to try to design your own converged uh, infrastructure and utilize uh, OEM hardware and and sort of design uh, your solution from the inside out. Uh, sometimes that can be a lot of labor, right? It can, you can spend a lot of time designing that. It, it sort of waves in the face of this simplicity of of bolt-on boxes that some of these other disruptive players offer. But then again, there's some values in and uh, baking your own as well, yeah, right? It's the right solution for uh, you. Right, and you can kind of make it tight and right, and I think uh, that's one of, hopefully we'll have a customer on board that will be able to um, uh, give some illustration on some of their experiences with SimpliVity and Nutanix and uh, with the HP as well. Uh, so, uh, folks, uh, from those of us over here in, uh, in sunny Tampa, we uh, certainly appreciate uh, your time uh, for, for – uh, Spending some time to get to Novology and a little, learn a little bit, hopefully, for, about convergence. And uh, we hope that you folks can tune in next time uh, so that we can go over uh, some of the more uh, intricate details associated uh, with each of those uh, vendors. Until next time, folks, thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the other side.